Hi, welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Tonight we're going to talk about history, not of the world. I don't want to go there. Uh, we're going to talk about history of an engine, in particular of its fault codes, and even more specific of the engine protection fault codes. Now, engine protection fault codes uh, can never be erased out of a field that you can go to that's called engine protection. And the ECM, when you log a fault in the normal fault list, if that's an engine pr protection fault, the ECM will also take it from here and copy it over here. So these faults are erasable in your normal fault list, but the engine protection list can only be erased when the ECM is sent to recon and it is wiped clean and a bootloader is loaded in it. Yeah, in other words, it's rebuilt. So uh, we look at engine protection or I look at engine protection because it tells me what was going on with that engine and nobody can hide anything. And so what faults are logged that go to engine protection? Well, we've got uh, excessively high intake manifold temperature. Okay, we have excessively high coolant temperature. We have excessively high oil temperature. We have excessively low oil pressure. In some calibrations, we will have excessively low coolant because the coolant sensor is able to detect mildly low, moderately low, and critically low. And so then they'll log a low coolant fault. Uh, some calibrations will have EGR temperature in there. Some will have a uh, diesel particulate filter outlet temperature in there. And they will have diesel particulate filter differential pressure all of those can be found, depending on the calibration and model year of the engine, in engine protection. So let's go and take a look at uh, what you see when you look at engine protection, and I'll just talk briefly about it. So when we're looking at engine protection, it's very important to look at the far right where it says fault and duration. So duration is how long that was active or the check engine light or the engine stop light was on on the dash. Uh, typically engine protection faults will drive a red stop light but there are some exceptions where it'll just be a yellow warning light. For example, uh, you can have excessively high coolant temperature and critically high. So the excessively high might drive a yellow lamp, but the critically high would drive the red lamp. And whenever a red lamp comes on, if engine shutdown is enabled in the parameters, the red stoplight will start flashing. And the moment it starts flashing, in 30 seconds, the engine's shutting off. I don't care what you're doing. It's shutting off if that's enabled. Now, uh, under fault, it tells you the hours that that fault, uh, at the, it tells you the time on the ECM, the total running hours at the moment that fault was active. Uh, duration tells you how long the fault was active. Now you notice over the left on description, it says no data available. Well, I happen to know uh, from looking at enough of these that when you see no data available, it's usually referring to after treatment diesel particulate filter differential pressure. And if you go to value, you'll see that it's 5.26 ounces. And so I know that it's talking about soot load because soot load is measured in ounces. So in other words, uh, generally speaking, the ECM will try to drive a regen uh, when a passive regen, when soot load gets up to a little over 
2.2 to 2.25. And when it gets up over 2.50, that's when you start seeing fault 1921. And that would drive engine protection here. Now, they're not telling you, in that case, the fault number, but uh, it is telling you the ounces. So that five ounces, that would be 1922, obviously. Most likely, eventually, they'll do a calibration update and it will fix this where it says no date available and fault code is zero. What you should be seeing under fault code is either, well, in this case, it'll be 1922, but it, it can be 1921 or 1922. The other two faults for needing a regen, they don't put in engine protection. Uh, so then we go down and we see there's engine coolant temperature, crankshaft speed, engine oil temperature, crankcase pressure, and we can look to the to the far right under fault and we can see how many hours were on the engine, and that's total hours when that fault first happened. And then duration would tell us the number of seconds, minutes, or hours that that occurred. Now let's look at engine crankshaft speed position, data valid but above normal operating range most severe. It says uh, 2707 and then 2847. And you're probably thinking, well, those engines don't go over 1800, generally speaking, or maybe 2100. How do you get to 28? Well, in this case, this was out of a big machine uh, a big road crane and it's got a big Allison transmission in it that's about as big as I am or bigger and the operator can downshift that uh, or he can put it in neutral if he goes down a hill and pull it back in gear and a lot of times they'll do that to gain road speed and no you're not supposed to do that but sometimes they do then when they get to the bottom of the hill, they don't realize that they're going faster than the engine would be going in high gear at 2100 RPM. And they pull that back in gear and that transmission goes right into gear. And when, and when it goes into gear, it spins that engine. And a lot of times that's why you see this. Now you see on a duration where it shows three seconds and three seconds. You can have a problem with the crankshaft speed sensor and see high values, RPM values, that never really happened. It's glitches. But you'll always see zero seconds under duration. If you see a timestamp that has seconds logged under duration, that engine was oversped. So we've got a couple more values on here for engine oil temperature, crankcase pressure, and it shows you the values and the fault codes that were associated with it. Let's look at our next uh, continuing of the same engine, engine protection view. You've got tur turbocharger turbine intake temperature. And that is a calculated number. It's not measured. And that usually happens if you have a boost leak. We've got exhaust gas pressure. And look at the value, 186, 186. 78. 186 is as high as the sensor can read. That is capped out. Uh, we've got EGR temperature 464, 436. Engine coolant temperatures. So you can see the timestamps on the far right, the, va uh, the fault under fault value uh, for time. It's, it's all over the place from a few hundred hours to thousands of hours. So if we have an engine that's got a, a bunch of spun bearings in it, I'll go back and I'll look through this list and I'll look for oil pressure faults, oil over temperature faults. If we have one that's got high blow by, I'll look for a coolant temperature that was severe uh, in the last, say, 500 hours, things like that. So this tells you a story. If we get an engine in, that they want us to evaluate, this is the first place I look because I can see uh, what kind of problems the engine had as it went through its life. If there was a lot of crankcase pressure faults, if there was uh, that were associated with 
uh, frequent low coolant or coolant and coolant, I should say, and coolant overheats that were severe enough to get in here, then I'm going to suspect that we've got at least liner scuffing going on. And I'm going to tell them, you know, this is this probably needs to be changed out if you're doing a refurb on the machine. So that's how I use engine protection. I don't ever use it to um, to pin something on an operator or a driver because they can be running a machine and something can happen and it's not their fault. Uh, it's just what it is while they're driving it. I use this to know what the condition of the engine is and what to uh, kind of expect and to give people an idea that question me and say, hey, give me give me your opinion on this engine and what we need to do to it. Are we going to be putting money in it? A lot of money in it. Uh, can we just do a little work on it and it'll get by for six months because we're going to, you know, get rid of the machine or whatever. So that's uh, that's engine protection. And that is found uh, inside of the Insight program. And we can talk about that in another video. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. See you next time.